Tracy, thank you very much. I've got a little gift for you here. And it says, Tracy, win for all of us in Middlesbrough South and East Cleveland. For the many, not the few. Tracy. Before I start, let's just pause for a, sec a second and recall what happened in London on Saturday and what happened in Manchester. Four people from this region died in the concert in Manchester and the whole of the city of Manchester came together the following day. Only 18 hours later, thousands of people were in Albert Square showing their solidarity in commemoration of those that have died. Just as in London, an awful lot of people assembled together straight away afterwards to show their solidarity again with those that have been killed just because they happen to be out on a Saturday night enjoying themselves and doing what everybody wants to do at any time in their lives. Those people that died must not be forgotten and we as a society must continue to support those families all, for all time because they will never get over the trauma of what happened. I thought holding the concert last night in Manchester was an amazing thing to do and absolutely the right thing to do because it showed that we're not going to allow anybody to dictate how we live our lives or how we go about how we go about enjoying ourselves and for those people that imagine somehow or other these kind of terrorist attacks are going to deter us from exercising our democratic right to have our election to decide who our government is going to be wrong we carry on democracy will prevail <laughs> uh, and i made a speech about this last night and about all the issues surrounding it and so this election is of course about many many things but it's also i think r recognizing those people that have lost loved ones and suffered as a result of it so if you could just have a pause for a few moments silence in memory of all those that died in manchester and in liverpool and at the same time pay a huge thank you to the police, the British Transport Police, the firefighters, ambulance service, NHS crews, and so many others that did so much to try and save life. Thank you very much to all of them. They stand by us every day of the year. We must stand by them at the same time. Thank you very much. <laughs> this, this election is now only a few hours away almost. And I tell you what, we've been traveling the whole country and we've still got the whole country left to go around again because we're not going to leave any area behind. We're going to leave no stone unturned to get our message out about this election and how people have got a choice, a real choice in this election. Either we can go down the road of a government that passes by on the other side, leaves communities behind, doesn't care about the effects of free market economics, doesn't care about the effects of cuts in local government expenditure, doesn't care about the effects of NHS cuts, doesn't care about the effects on our children of underfunding schools, or a Labour government that would do things very, very differently. This book, for the many, not the few, has within it a program, an idea, and a philosophy of how we approach life and how we approach these issues. I'm very proud of this document, very proud of my shadow cabinet that helped to put it together, and very proud of the huge contribution Ian Lavery and Andy MacDonald have made to the team and what's in this book. Thank you, Ian. Thank you, Andy, for the work that you do. I'll give you an example of how we do things differently. Middlesbrough has made steel for the world. Dorman Long were a household name, famous all, all around the world. You could see bridges, you could see railways built with steel from this area. The skill that provided those things for people all over the planet. And then it was brought into public ownership with British Steel and continued doing all of that. And then privatization followed. One company after another bought it, then eventually SSI, and then it was closed down. What did the government do when it was under threat? What did it do when it was about to be closed down? What intervention did they propose? Nothing, nothing, nothing. I tell you this, 
a Labour government with MPs like Ian and Andy and Tracy as part of that parliamentary majority would not pass by and let a community die and suffer because of a lack of government intervention. This document, our manifesto, is quite clear. We will have an industrial strategy that does protect our steel industry and does invest in high technology, sustainable jobs for the future. We will not allow six million people to be earning less than the living wage. We will not allow a million people to be working on zero hours contracts. We will give rights at work from day one of employment, not having to wait. And beyond that, and beyond that, we won't charge people for going to an employment tribunal to try and get justice. This will be a government, a government that looks at things in a very, very different way. And through the National Investment Bank, we will be investing 500 billion across the whole of the UK, regionally based, so that no area is left behind and that industrial strategy works for everybody. It's simply not right or fair that the vast majority of transport infrastructure investment goes in London and the South East. London needs it, of course, but so does every other region. Share it out fairly. And it, but it's also an election about our future and about the social justice that we want. Our children only get one childhood, obviously. They only get one chance in school, obviously. They only get that one opportunity. And it's up to each generation to make sure the next generation has even better opportunities than they had. This government remaining in office will mean what in five years' time? How much longer will the waiting list be in our hospitals? How much more overcrowding will there be in our classrooms? How many more Sure Start centres would have been closed? How many lost opportunities would there be with a Tory government handing tax relief to the biggest businesses and the wealthiest people while cutting the services for the vast majority of the rest all over the country? And so, we want our children to have the best possible opportunity. So we start with preschool. We're going to give free, free 30 hours per week places in preschool for all two to four year olds. No rationing of it, no means testing, one place for every child for 30 hours a week to play together, to learn together, to grow up together in communities that are strengthened by our children being brought together. And then you move into primary schools. We will fund our primary schools properly and we'll make sure that every child gets a lunch every day in school because, do you know what? Hungry children don't learn very well. When the Tories decided to cut back on the limited school lunches that were available, they then said they'd put it into breakfast and we got some very smart people in my office and it took them about two minutes to work out what that meant. It meant 6.7 pence per child per day for breakfast. I think you can get about an egg cup full of Rice Krispies for that sort of money. What an insult. What a disgrace. We'll make sure every child gets a decent meal every day in school. And I recognise the huge work and stress that teachers are under and their sense of responsibility. So many of them help children out by feeding them when they're hungry. That should not be necessary, and so we're going to make sure our schools are properly funded and they're there for all of our children. Likewise, head teachers in primary and secondary schools going through awful stress, deciding which courses to close down, which teachers to get rid of, which uh, teaching assistants to get rid of, all because the funding formula has changed and money has been taken away. <laughs> What's the answer of this government? Well, it might work amongst the sort of circles they live in, they said, well, have a collection amongst the parents, they can help out the school budget. Sorry, we pay taxes in order to make sure there is education for every child. It should not be relying on the lottery of charity to decide how our schools are run. I'm absolutely determined to make sure our schools are properly funded and our children have a real chance. And We'll bring back the education maintenance allowance so that those that want to stay on and study, go to college, do A-levels, go on to university, will have that chance. 
And then we've had a long discussion, a long debate about what to do over college and university education and adult education. When I was uh, leaving school of that age, had I wanted to go to university and got in, basically it would have been free for me, as it was for that whole generation. And I take the view, it's not up to my generation to pull up the ladder on the next generation. So we've taken the view, and it's an expensive one, but we believe it's the right thing to do, because we invest for all of us, is to end university and college fees and adult education fees to give everybody an equal chance of getting the education that they want. Because it cannot be right that students are leaving, leaving university 50 and 60 thousand pounds in debt. It simply cannot be right. And you know what happens? Two things happen really because of this. One is the young person who hasn't got into university because they couldn't afford it, hasn't got the education they wanted because it wasn't available for them. They lose out. They're probably angry about it. They're probably disappointed. They probably feel thwarted in life. But you know what? happens also, we all lose out. We've lost that nurse, that doctor, that engineer, that surveyor, that plumber, that electrician. We've lost that skilled person who could make a contr contribution to the lives of all of us. I see funding education properly as funding for the future, investing in our young people for the future and giving them the chance that they deserve. But Tory misery knows no bounds knows no bounds whatsoever. There's a million older people, mainly older people, waiting for social care, not getting it. There is a crisis in almost every hospital of funding, of shortage of staff, of waiting times and waiting lists, even for A&E departments. It does mean that we have to recognize our National Health Service is the most precious thing we have, the most civilized thing about our country. But again, it's under threat. It's under threat from lack of funding and privatisation. There will not be NHS privatisation under Labour. There will be property funding of our hospitals and decent pay for those in it. And there are, I've mentioned social care, I mentioned the NHS. There's one that I mention at almost every meeting and rally we do. A quarter of us are going to suffer a mental health crisis in our lives. Let's stop the stigma, stop the nastiness about mental health conditions, recognize it could happen to all of us, reach out to support those that are going through it, and properly fund our mental health service. Properly fund it so that particularly young people can get the support that they need when they're going through difficult times. And so what our manifesto is about is about investment, it is about an economy that works for all, it is about fair wages, and it is about decent public services. But also, it's about an expression by all of us of the kind of world and kind of community and kind of society we want to live in. Look amongst us today. I know it's raining and you've mostly got umbrellas up, but you can still see each other's faces. At least I can see you all anyway. What are we? We're young, we're old, we're black, we're white, we're gay, we're straight, we're disabled, we're not disabled. We're a community. We're together. Yay! And it's that sense, it's that sense of community that supported the miners during the miners' strike all those years ago. Yay! It's that sense of community that supported the steel workers. It's that sense of community that doesn't pass by on the other side. We as people... We as ordinary people in our communities see somebody in stress, we reach out and help them. It's natural, it's human, it's a decent, reasonable thing to do. Do we have a government that's reaching out to people or is it passing by on the other side? Is it passing by on the other side, ignoring the poverty, ignoring the homeless, ignoring those going through stress in life? This election is about a choice. A choice of the kind of society and kind of world we want to live in. Ours, based on the values of us, of communities, of people coming together. Ours, based on those labour traditions of the National Health Service, of education, of intervention in industry to make sure there are jobs and services and investment for the future. Or the Tory way, the Tory way of tax cuts at the top and cuts at the bottom. I know what choice I've made, I know what choice our manifesto has made, and in the remaining days we've got a wet Monday, a dry Tuesday, 
a middling Wednesday, but we've got a very, very sunny Thursday coming up. And on that sunny Thursday, let's get out there and support Tracy to get her elected to be part of that Labour majority. But also, in the run-up to it in these last three days, let's have those conversations on the bus, on the train, in the cafe, in the pub, anywhere you go. Just ask people, what kind of world do you want to live in? One where there's a party in government that glories in injustice and inequality, or somebody, people, MPs, that see the world differently through the prism of humanity and community and solidarity of coming together. I know which I want. I think I know what you want. Vote for Tracy on Thursday. Win in Middlesbrough and East Cleveland. Thank you very much indeed. Gentlemen, colleagues, friends, what a fantastic speech by the next Prime Minister of this country. But let me just conclude today's proceedings by simply saying, politics is about priorities. The manifesto set out by Jeremy Corbyn is about priorities. It's about the redistribution of the wealth. Let nobody tell you that this country is no finance. We've got bucket loads of cash. It's how we best spend it. Jeremy's outlined that. Get out on Thursday. Get out there. Vote for Tracy. She'll be a tremendous MP. And hopefully this fellow will be the Prime Minister when you wake up on Friday morning. Good luck. Best wishes. Solidarity. Before I go, before I go, thank you, thank you very much for being a great crowd. Thank you for not getting very wet. But we've got uh, five events today. We finish off in the Sage and Gateshead tonight. We're all over the Midlands tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, we're covering goodness knows how many places, but we're covering the whole country. We are campaigning right up to the last minute to convince people we can win this election. Thank you.